Look at you. You made it. It's another episode of We Did That Shit Podcast, where we talk about who did some shit, what we learned from shit, and how we got through some shit. I'm Maya. And I'm the B. We appreciate you, podcast family, and we hope your week was the shit. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome, and thank you for checking us out. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and follow us on all social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at We Did That Shit. Hey, Maya. What's up? Nothing. <laughs> Just chilling. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. What is going on? I'm hungry. Me too. Like I feel like I'm starved after Me that workout too. today. Oh, I didn't work <laughs> what out. What do you always say? I feel like I'm um dying from the scurvy. <laughs> yes. <I'm done>. <laughs> <laughs> I that's how eat. I feel to that's exactly how I feel right now. Mm. So my stomach is growling and everything. Yeah. At least you hurt the meal. I ain't work nothing out. <laughs> Sheesh. You'll get there. I am. I am. I'm a, I'm motivated today. One of my patients, she was so proud. She was talking about, she was like, oh, well, look at this. I pulled this dress out and I can fit it. Mm. And I put a button this jacket. And because she said, mm, I moved and I'm on it. I'm riding my bike. I'm finding oh. bike trails. I'm working out. I walked this many miles on the treadmill on the rainy days. And I was just looking at her like, oh, that oh, so- that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking in your mind, I ain't done none of that stuff. So. Ridiculous. It's well, always was, funny how you could big somebody else up, like, yeah, girl, keep at it. You should do this and you should do that. Well, you ain't doing it yourself. I was like, the doctor would be so happy to hear all that. Look at you, girl. All right, you look good. She did. She really looked good. And I was like, you know what? You need to get your fat ass together. <laughs> Well, listen, it's a process. I mean, I was telling you last night, I tried on some jeans that I wasn't able to like get up and I finally was able to get them up and uh, button them. And I ain't feel like when Claire was like, uh, she couldn't fit the dress, but then when she could finally fit the dress, she was like, and I can breathe and I can move and I can dance. That's how I felt in them jeans last night. Yes. Cause you were screaming. <laughs> I was so excited. I was happy for you as I stare into my closet of clothes that I can't fit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's more that I can't fit. It's a work in progress every day. But, you know, <sighs> I, I certainly am. The fact of the matter is we know it works. Right. You know, what I mean? we know it works. So <laughs> I'm again, I just think it should be illegal that my gym is in the same parking lot as the Chick-fil-A. Yeah, that should be illegal. That's like putting a weight where I go. Well, I never went to Weight Watchers, but back in the day when I did Weight Watchers and then they got like, you know, the centers where you go and you get weight. Mm -hmm. It's right in between two restaurants, like a Thai restaurant and an Indian restaurant. And then it's Weight Watchers in the middle. Come Mm. on, Weight Watchers. What are you doing? Yeah, like find some space in the middle of nowhere. Right. You know, because I told you several times I sat in the car and was like, whew, I'm tired. <laughs> and then got into that drive through at Chick-fil-A and went home and never made it inside the gym. That right. Is, <laughs> that is it. You'll mm-hmm. make it. But how was your week other than not making it to the gym? Um, my week was I had a pretty good week. You know what I mean? It's um, n- not that I'm doing much trying to get my little new space ready. And um, I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. And I'm really trying to get what I want and, you know, envision it and then get exactly what I want. I'm talking Mm -hmm. about colors, you know, the specific furniture, everything. I'm mapping it out and I'm doing it, you know, on my own and I'm going to get what I want and I'm not asking anybody's permission or opinions or anything. I'm just going, it's going to be my space. So 
This I'm is excited Jiggy's apartment you talking no, about? No, it's my new space. <laughs> Jiggy said he wasn't ready. <laughs> this is my new space. So once you map it out and you put the color scheme together and you don't ask anyone's permission and you get it all like zen and feng shui and everything, mm-hmm. and then Jiggy says, hey, mom, I'm ready to move, then what you going to do? I'm going to tell him the apartment's not ready. So you going to lie? No, it's not ready. It won't be ready for him at that time when he asks if I'm not ready. So you going to sit on this podcast and tell me that you're going to tell my favorite little cousin. <laughs> <laughs> the that truth lying. that the apartment is not ready for you at this time. Mm. Mommy's still working on it. Mm. Mm-mm. And get it all together for you. I'm gonna be so, like, she lying. <laughs> it's a lie. You're a murderer. No, I'm gonna just be like, she's lying. She's lying. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Don't say it around me because I'm definitely going to dime you out. You no, know what that okay. means? Don't do a crime with me because I'm I'm telling. No. So this is the thing. You know, he has to get a job. Okay. So I feel like this is my only leverage. If this is something you work, you want, you have to work. How are you going to pay the bills? That's true. It, it's ready as soon as you are able to pay the bills. Right. <laughs> you only have to earn this amount of month. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> what do you think you can do to earn that, Jay? You know, like that. You really do have it all mapped out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, good for you. I yes. can't wait to see it when it's all finished. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have adult gatherings. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sure am. <laughs> mm-hmm. So is that all you had going on for the week? A light-skinned guy asked me out. It was important to point out that he was light-skinned? Yes. <laughs> and why is that? Because I said yes. Good for you. We're saying uh, yes to all dates. Well, I said that I was only going to say yes if I really wanted to go. No, oh, you really want to go. I do, but I don't know why. I don't know if I really want to go, but I want to go. But mm-hmm. I don't know why. He doesn't check any of my boxes. And I'm not even talking about the five C's. I'm talking about the superficial stuff. Mm-hmm. He de- mm, He's light skinned. He's mm-hmm. tall. He's mm. a little younger than I am. He's, yeah. And like, yeah, I'd be like, yeah, have a nice day. But for some but you, reason. But you want to go on a date. Yeah. You know what I think it is? Does I he think, have confidence? Yeah. Okay. I mean, he was very confident when he asked. Yeah. Well, then he has confidence. You know. But, um, I mean, I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but. I was just saying, like, I don't know. It's something in something that intrigues me enough to want to go. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Oh, so good for good for him. And then I just felt like this might sound crazy, but <laughs> it's not really crazy. But I was just thinking, like, <laughs> so if anybody who knows me ever saw me out with him, they surely wouldn't think it was a date. It crazy? It's not crazy. They anybody who saw me out with him. They wouldn't think I was on a date. So, <laughs> you know, because he's light skinned, like light, light. So nobody ever seen you with a light skinned guy? Mm-mm. Nobody would think. They would be like, oh, you know, but B must be out for work or something. He going to be the guy that comes in and sweeps your ass off your feet just because he don't check none of the boxes. None of them. None of the boxes. And it, and you already thinking if somebody seen us together, they wouldn't think that we were together. Now, you were the same person who said on the last date that somebody asked you out with on that you had all week to come up with an excuse. And then after that, you said, I ain't going to be like that no more. I'm, you I'm know not, what, maybe not, I was I'm thinking negative. So I'm just, you're not coming up with an excuse. But the, the thought that came into your mind was, if somebody seen us out, they wouldn't think we was together. Right. But I'm not coming up with an excuse to cancel. I'll, <laughs> like if it comes to fruition, I'll go. It's going to come into fruition. He asked you. Right. But we don't have a date or a time. So I don't know. I mean, it, we'll leave see. that up to him. Alle- I will. That up to him. Allegedly, allegedly, we got a date. Sometime so in the future, I just I don't know. 
I don't know. You can't be too sure. Right. Well, keep me posted. And I'm going to have a questionnaire, too, like when you ask. So is this a date? Is this the day that we're going <laughs> on the date? Is this the time that the date will begin? Is this the place that we're going on the date? So I will know for sure, you know, if I'm stood up. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. You ain't going to be stood up this time. Mm. My, my light skin brothers is making a comeback. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You're not going to be stood up. I think it's going to be all good. I can't wait for this. You, you can't wait. Okay, great. I'll just have a salad. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's been so long since I've been on a date. Like, I even think about, like, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> it's crazy. Life. Yeah, well. Hopefully, you can just hold the conversation and you don't have to that even think exactly in your mind and saying. say, well, I, I hold the conversation. Yeah, you're going to be able to hold the conversation. You talk on here every week. You'll be able to hold the conversation. Yeah, we talk every day. Yeah, but trust me, unless he's a, like, you've talked to this guy before, right? Not like, you know, briefly, brief, just brief. Right. But in the brief conversations that you had, it wasn't like dead air, was it? Was it like a continuous conversation, you know, in the, in, even if it was brief? Yeah, but continuous conversations, two and three minutes. No, I mean. Anyway. I'm trying to think positive. And oh, okay, okay. I'm just asking. I don't know. Yeah. Well, he could talk for two or three minutes. Okay. Well, we gonna it's... eat. He. D- right. You know what? But I did learn he he doesn't drink at all. Never drank. Doesn't smoke anything. Really? Yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna get there early so I can give me a couple shots. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> You don't want to be at the table like, can I get you anything? Yeah, give me a, a cranberry juice. And you like, give me a double. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my double, <laughs> I'm gonna get my doubles before he gets there, and be like, yeah, I'll take a ginger ale, thanks. <laughs> oh no, 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 it's okay. You don't drink. I don't have to drink. Don't worry. Right. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'll be toasty as hell, laughing at us. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I'm looking forward to this. This is mm-hmm. something to look forward to, um, especially because he doesn't check any of your boxes. So keep mm-hmm. me and the podcast family informed. Well, last time you said that, I got stood up. Stop <laughs> saying that. <laughs> you telling everybody to tune in. <laughs> they tuned in for crickets. Like, yeah, nothing. It was okay. still a good episode. It was a good story. <laughs> It was a good story about the nothing. Okay. Well, I tell you, laugh at my pain. Mm. <laughs> but how was your week? My week was okay. It went, it, it, you know, I don't remember what I did from day to day because I don't even know what day today is. But something happened to me this week. Mm hmm. I. Um, went to go get my car serviced. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. had an accident in my car. Did I tell you that? No. Yes, I had an accident. I have a freaking dent in my car. Yeah, yes. In car? Yes, in my new car. Oh. So I was at the car dealership, right? Mm-hmm. And I pulled into the lane and it was the exit lane, but I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So a car was coming, you know, a man Mm -hmm. was bringing a car in. So he was like, you have to move the car. So I said, okay. So I was going to go straight out the exit Mm -hmm. lane. But in the meantime, somebody pulled out of the lane that I was supposed to be in. So Mm -hmm. I said, oh, okay. I could just back up. Mm -hmm. When I backed up, I did not literally, I did not see this sign that was Mm -hmm. there and Mm -hmm. my car hit the sign. And so when I got out, Mm -hmm. And then this guy going to come to the car and say, did you need some help? I said, no, I'm just standing in the service lane. I'm just sitting in a service lane for nothing in the world. I just like Mm -hmm. to come to Honda and chill. Right. (laughs) You know what I mean? So when I finally got the help and I got out, I saw the freaking dent. And I'm like, I know that's not a dent in my damn car. And it was. It was a freaking dent in the car. So now I have to get the dent fixed and they can't even pop the damn dent out. I got to get body work done to the car. So now I'm riding around with a dent. And you know how I feel about Mm. just... Mm, mm. And you can't even really notice it, but I know it's there. You know it's so there, I right? Want to be fixed, like right now. Mm. And my girlfriend was like, "Girl, if you don't just ride around in that dent for a little minute," mm. I said, mm. "They don't do that, right?" <laughs> so I'm gonna try to get it fixed over um, Thanksgiving. But that's okay. not what happened to me. Mm-hmm. 
what happened to me was I left the car dealership and at that evening, my tire pressure light came on. Mm. I took the car back, got air, you know, put in the tire, taken out of the tire because it was too much air in it. Mm -hmm. When I got to New Jersey the next day, Mm -hmm. I had to, my tire pressure light came on again. So I had to go to the air pump and check the freaking air in my tires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the next day I had to go and put air in my tires. Mm -hmm. I realized Mm -hmm. at that Mm -hmm. moment that Mm -hmm. the next man who says hello to me Mm -hmm. in an interested way, Mm -hmm. he going to be my man. I know. Yeah. 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 This is serious. No, I, I really no, made that no, no, I mean, yeah. I said, mm-hmm. you know, you always talk about that I'm on this five year plan or whatever. Mm-hmm. But the five year plan is turning into the five minute plan. That's right. And I'm making an announcement here and now on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Do not say hello to me mm-hmm. unless you're ready for this commitment. Right. Because my man. my man. Like <laughs> I gotta be one of them girls now. Now I gotta be one of them girls that's just like Hey, hey, we together. Yes. Like when I'm talking to my friend, it's like, what you doing? Nothing. Get ready, call my man. You got a man? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Putting air in that tire, squatting Mm-mm. down, turning the cat, taking mm-hmm. the air. I had to call my brother because you know I don't know how to put no air in no tire. And you know I don't know how to take no air out the tire. Mm-hmm. So I had to call my brother to walk me through it. And I just made a decision right then and there. Like, you want to jump in my DMs? Mm. You want to, you know, say, hey, whatever. Up? Right. Whatever. It's me and you, boo. Mm-hmm. So don't say nothing to me unless you're ready for this long term commitment. I will always say, I so feel you. I am, <laughs> you know, I know, I so feel you on this one because I used to always, people used to ask me, you know, would you get married again? And, um, you know, I think about it sometimes. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe, you know. And then sometimes I'd be, um, looking at other couples and be like, yeah, no. Right. Uh, you know, I like um, waking up and doing what I want. Mm-hmm. Not asking permission and, you know, stuff like that. Some things I do like. How, and I used to always say, I, I, I'll get married when I can find 10 things for, for my husband to do. And I only could ever come up with three, you know, service me well, mm-hmm. uh, take out the garbage and do all, all I want to do is get in the car and drive it. I need you to turn the car around in the driveway. I need you to get gas. I need you, even though I don't even pump my own gas because I live in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. But I, I need you to, I, all I want to do is get in the car and drive. And the only thing that should be different is, babe, take my car today because I got to take your car to be serviced. That, that's it. That's, that's the only, that's all I want. That's you know? where I'm at with it. Too, and man. I kept saying like, that's only three things, but that one thing is so big. It's so major. It's, it's just, yeah, it just might, it wiped out the need for 10 things because that's big. Yeah. That's big. And I'm so, you know, that's I'm how my right week, now. that's how my week went. I, I pump. I put air in my tire mm-hmm. and I made a decision about my life going forward. Um, so I, I would say that I had a pretty breakthrough week. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, listen out for the next time that I come on here and make this announcement about this man who said hello to me. And then he, now he, my man, I, and, and I don't even got to wait till deadline of January 1st because right. I, it's just me and my boo. It's your opportunity. Whoever <laughs> Whoever you are, this is your opportunity. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it's, don't it's, let this moment pass you by. <laughs> it's real out here. <laughs> so, um, it got real. It, exactly. it, it really has gotten real. So, mm-hmm. anyway, moving on from that, who did some shit this week? Oh, well, you know, it's been a powerful week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, on the last podcast, we talked about the importance of voting. Mm. Um, getting out there and, you know, casting your ballot is so important, especially in communities of color. Um, so wonderful. I mean, I don't know if it's because we said so, but surely somebody was listening because this was some record breaking election. This was a record breaking election for a non-presidential election. There were a lot of records at this election and, um, Biggest voter turnout, uh, largest number of uh, people who voted 
prior to the mm -hmm, early the election, voting, early voting, um, number of women running for seats. Um, it's a record number of campaign fundraising mm -hmm. dollars, mm -hmm. um, LGBT, you know, Muslim women, women of color, number of women, period, just yes. so many um, things. So I definitely, you know, I definitely don't want to just skim over it. You know, some of these things are really important. So, yeah. What did you well, think about it? Well, you know, I we we have been um, saying for the last couple of weeks that voting was so important, especially, like you said, for communities of color. And so on Tuesday, November 6th, we held the midterm elections uh, for 2018. And they couldn't have been more important than they were. And people, like you said, really showed up and showed out. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't get all of the wins that we would have liked, but we definitely got some major wins. I mean, this election, you know, it, it reminded me of the presidential election in the sense of people voted for Trump because it was really a backlash from people from us having president obama right you know it was like a whitewash uh a uh, solution to them being mad that a person a black person was in power for eight years like right. they haven't been in power for 800 years right um and so this now this midterm election we see the same thing we see people like you said show up for early voting more youth this, yeah. this this Young election people. really this election really reminded me of when uh, President Obama first ran because when President Obama first ran, more young people had voted that than ever before. Mm -hmm. It really was a young person's election, right. and it's one of the things that I want to stress: the youth. Pay attention to the youth because the youth, eighteen to twenty nine, they really are the people who are going to lead this the charge in uh, voting, you know, and putting people that we need in powerful positions. And as you said, at least 118 women will serve in the uh, 116th Congress, mm -hmm. bringing a share of women legislators to at least 22%. It far mm -hmm. exceeds the previous held record of 105 women in 2016. Right. And... We now, meaning we, I'm, I'm meaning Democrats, now control the House of Representatives. Right. And that's really, really important because we haven't been, Democrats haven't been in control of the House in eight years. And so it's important to note because it's essential to how we'll have power to block the laws that Trump are, you know, putting into effect. Mm -hmm. And we know that the, the Democrats now being in power, they'll introduce a wave of policy proposals demonstrating that the party's priorities on a range of issues are are big. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish. And so election. Right. And just a little bit of a breakdown, because like you said, we don't want to uh, claim yeah. over it. Well, hold on. Let's, Go ahead. Let's talk. The first thing I want to talk about is because, you know, everybody talks about how we're heading into a recession. And um, are they saying know, that because people are so gun ho that the economy is doing so well? No, they said uh, um, most of the reports say that we're heading for a recession. And uh, the pre in 2016, first of all, Barack Obama, even though everybody acts like you know, they were upset that we had a black president. Historically, after a Democrat served two terms as president, the Republican always won after that. Like, mm -hmm. always. It's never been uh, a Democratic gov uh, president three terms in a row, ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when Donald Trump won the Republican nomination for president, I'll just, and I kept telling everybody, I was like, he's going to win, you know, because this is what this country does every single time. And they were like, there's no way he's going to win. And there's no way, but yes, he's going to win. And that's exactly what happened. But in his, uh, in that election, 2016, it was a record breaking year for campaign funds. Mm -hmm. And it was 4.4 billion dollars mm. 
spent on campaigning. Mm. You know, combined. That's everybody. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. combined. But that was in 2016. This midterm election where no president was running, mm-hmm. five point two billion dollars. Wow. Spent on this election. But it, it and that goes to what we have said in the past couple of episodes. It goes to the urgency of where we are with a president like Trump and the laws that he are, he's putting into effect. It really just goes to show the urgency that people are now waking up, you know, and realizing who we have leading the charge for this country and the demise that I like I say all the time, it's going to hell in a handbag. So that's why we see the record number of uh, people coming out early voting. That's why we see the record number of funds being um, generated for these campaigns. It's it's because of who we have as our president. Mm-hmm. And thirty. Uh, speaking of early voting, thirty nine million Americans mm. voted early. That's huge. Thirty nine million. Yes. That's huge. And so that that's a record too. So you know. And other records that we had, like I said, it was a historic um, win, especially for women. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's just talk a little bit about them. So yes. we have Rashida Talib of Michigan. Yeah. And, Muslim. Mm-hmm. And Ian, is her name? Hiram? I think it's Elon. I don't know uh, if you pronounce the H. Omar of Minnesota. Mm-hmm. They yeah. became the first and second Muslim women elected to Congress. Yes. Both of them are Democrats. Yes. Uh, we have Debbie Halen of Arizona and Sharice Davis of Kansas. They became the first two Native American women elected to Congress. Mm-hmm. Both women are Democrats. Um, I, I, I wonder if they're going to let them in to, um, you know, when they go in to serve, if they can wear their headdress. Exactly. Uh, Davis also also made history as the first openly LGBT woman of color in Congress. Okay. Um, Spread the love. Anaya love, Pres- love is love. Go right. Ahead. <laughs> Anaya Presley became Massachusetts' first black congresswoman. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we have Alexandria what Ocasio. Is Ocasio Cortez. Mm-hmm. 29 years old. Go girl. She was the youngest woman ever elected to Congress. We got a millennial in Congress, y'all. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we have Ver- Veronica Escobar and Sylvia Garcia became Texas's first two Latino Congresswomen. Both yes. of them are Democrats. Mm-hmm. We have Lou Leon Guerrero, a Democrat. She became the first woman governor of Guam. Mm-hmm. Angie Craig, who's a Democrat, she became the first openly lesbian mother in Congress and the first open... LGBTQ member of Congress from Minnesota. Mm, mm, mm. We have Johanna Hayes, a former school teacher and a Democrat. Right. Uh-huh. She became Connecticut's first black congresswoman. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, she's a Republican, but it's notable that young Kim of California, she became the first Korean American woman in Congress. Yes, yes. Uh, who else do we have? We have the first. Oh, no, I, I talked about the Muslim woman. Who's the lady in Georgia? Um, her son was killed. Oh, well, right. I'm going to I'm going to talk about her. But let me okay. first get this finished. So we have Marsha uh, Blackburn. She became the first female senator to represent Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have we have the first openly gay man elected as governor. That was Jared Polis. Yes. And and don't forget uh <laughs> that's from uh he's from Colorado. Colorado, right. Yeah. Where they smoke weed and living is easy. Um yeah. but <laughs> let's let's I think he ran openly gay, unlike our governor, Governor McGreevy, who was exposed while yes. he was in office, his wife acting like she didn't know he was gay. Like, lady, please. Yeah, she did. And I and then later said, she came out and said that she did know she did. that he course, was gay. Was I mean, mm-hmm. and um, and I always said, even when this was going on, like, what does this have to do with him having the ability to be governor? Right. You know, what I, mean? I don't know why he resigned. That was truth. so dumb. Yes. Living well, it, I think yes. that even when McGreevy, what what year did he resign? Because if we think back to, I was talking about this the other day with a friend. Mm-hmm. I I think back even to when I graduated from high school, right? When we went to high, when I went to high school, I graduated in 1997. It was because 
let me just backtrack a little bit. Somebody who we know um, got charged with sexual assault of a minor, right? Mm-hmm. And somebody that we know that we went to high school with. Mm -hmm. And so someone else that we know who knows that person was talking about how he was struggling because he was gay and he wasn't accepted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking about how much times have changed, even in that short span of time. In Mm -hmm. 1997, when I graduated from high school or when I was in high school, you could it wasn't that you couldn't be gay, but people, it wasn't widely accepted like it is now. Mm-hmm. And so McGreevy was like during that time. I say that to it say. It was 2000. Well, McGreevy was 2004 when it right. came so, out. So what did. I'm saying is, is 2004, you, people were still living in the closet, even though they still live in the closet now, but it just wasn't accepted. Like this gentleman, Jared Polis, ran as an openly gay man, only in 2018 will that something like that happen. Because, mm-hmm. I yeah, I just feel like in 2004, McGreevy, people weren't just like open arms with him. I think, no, I, I, I just, just think that's true. They had platforms, the LGBT community. That's had not that they didn't have platforms. They, they were not as, um, op- they were not as, um, you know, out and about as much back then. But if he would have just said, you know, if he would have just said, instead of cowering down, if he would have just said, yes, you know, I love men, the community would have rallied behind him. And it would have been like business as usual. I just think. I don't think that it would have been business as usual, but I do think that he would have had support. You have to be straight to be. No, it is not. But I'm, what I'm saying is is that military don't ask, don't tell. The biggest thing was the deceit. It was, but I, and I agree with everything that you're saying. However, I think that he would have had a number of people rallying for him, but I don't think that the vast majority of people would have opened armed, uh, been like, oh yeah, okay, this is what it is. And if, and if that was the case, then he would have ran on that platform, but that needs to be here nor there. Cause that's a whole nother topic that we could get into. But, um, Three uh, notable people that I wanted to talk about um, because well, let's let's just talk I, well, before we get into the three notables. Um, I just I don't you know women you know women in Congress and these women that we elected sending to Washington to represent us as a country. You know I really have to emphasize that it is a big deal and it is not just a big deal because they're women but it's a big deal because hopefully you know this is what we want as as women we want to be represented as women of color we want to be represented and also we need rallying in order to undo a lot of, or, or make new laws about the things that have negatively consistently in the practice affected women like Kavanaugh's appointment. You know, so, so even before things get to the Supreme court, you know, we have women fighting on our behalf to put these laws, you know, to make laws so that things don't even have to come across the desk of someone who is clearly you know, don't care nothing about women. Yeah. And so that's why that's a big reason why these elections are very important. And the number of women who we sent to Washington is so important. So. Yeah, I agree with you. And just to piggyback off of what you're saying, I, I what I want to say is, it's is super important that we have women of color in those positions, because right. this election, um, when you look at the you know, graphs and, you know, things that they put out after the election, Mm -hmm. white women are still white women, still being white women. And what I mean by that is white women act like they're supportive. Right. But then they go back into their communities. You know, they have these rallies, they march with us, they stand with us, Mm -hmm. but then they go back into their communities and they vote for the white not man. women. <laughs> you the know what I'm man. saying? Right. Mm-hmm. Even they're white women. They don't mm-hmm. do that. Right. And so you are correct. Right. Being women of color, you exactly. know, to be able to govern laws and to be able to stop, uh, for example, you know, white men telling 
women that they can't have abortions. You know, like mm-hmm. how do you tell women right. what they can do with their bodies right. is right. beyond me. But yes, I I I totally agree with you on mm-hmm. that. Um, but like I said, I wanted to just point out three notables. Um, one is Lucy Macbeth. Yes, uh, Lucy Macbeth is the mother of Jordan Davis, and Jordan right. Davis was shot. Um, he was murdered. He was murdered. I, I can't remember what year Jordan Davis was murdered, but he was murdered in Jacksonville, Florida. He was mm-hmm. the young. He was the young uh, boy who was murdered, and the and the white guy who murdered him. Um, tried to use the stand your ground law because he was playing his music. He and his friends were right. in a car and they were playing their music too loud, according to him. Um, and he was found guilty of first degree murder and sentenced um, mm-hmm. in the murder of Jordan Davis. But Lucy Macbeth made it her life's mission after her son, her only son was murdered mm-hmm. to fight for gun reform um, right. and uh, for stand your ground and shootings and people uh, and things of that nature. And so she ran in Georgia for Congress, a position that was once held by Newt Gingrich and she won. Right. And that and she won, she took down, she flipped the seat of a re- Republican who had been holding that seat for so long um, mm-hmm. after Newt Gingrich left the seat. And I think that that is just amazing, yeah. especially that she is using her platform and what and her what happened to her son to bring about change. And so mm-hmm. for the people that went out and voted her in, bravo to you. I mean, yes. hats off to you because mm-hmm. nothing or no mm-hmm. one deserves it more than someone who has experienced something like that and now wants to make a change for other families so they won't experience something like that. Uh, another notable is Stacey Abrams because we talked about Stacey Abrams quite a, a, a lot in the podcast. Uh, she was the in the running to become the first African-American um, governor, governor in mm-hmm. Georgia. Well, Stacey Abrams has not conceded. Go girl. Uh, and she should and she's not. not going to concede. Right. She should she, not. She came out and at the time of this recording and she uh, gave a speech and the votes are still being counted and mm-hmm. she's in. They're probably going to have a runoff and a recount of the election uh, because it was Brian Kemp, who she ran against in Georgia. Mm-hmm. He just resigned today at the time of this recording as the secretary of state mm-hmm. for Georgia. Right. Why can't you be the secretary of state in Georgia? Because you are over the election and how Hello. You come Hello. over your own. And ele- you kept the position through the whole election right. and you wiped out people from vote, you know, off the roster for voting. Yeah. For thing, and it was ill. It not only was it a conflict of interest; it is illegal what yeah. he did. Yeah, illegal. And Turned he only droves he, and droves of people away from yeah. voting. Yeah. Like what? The voter suppression. They mm-hmm. they came out and they said that they found seven hundred wrapped voting polls in Georgia. If the voter suppression that was happening in Georgia was unlike anything that we've seen. And so bravo to you, Stacey Abrams, that you said no. She's right. only no, she's only down. Not. I think that the number of votes that she's off by to force a recount and they're still counting is mm-hmm. something like 80K or something like that. So, yeah, keep going, Stacey Abrams, mm-hmm. and force that runoff. My last but not least notable uh, mention of this midterm election is Andrew Gilliam down in Florida. Mm-hmm. At the time of this. So Andrew Gilliam on Tuesday, early. he conceded very early, too early. Mm-hmm. Very early. I Too don't know early. who was on his team that said, mm-hmm. yeah, go ahead and concede. But he came out and he conceded. And so DeSantos was the winner. But not so fast. Yes. Not so fast. Mm-hmm. At the time of this recording, they are now doing a recount in Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, after they counted all of the votes, DeSantos had 49.6% and Gilliam had 49.2%. And it forced a runoff. That's and right. so now we're recounting. In Florida, I hope that you just, I hope that every vote counts. And I hope that we see a turn and Andrew Gilliam is the next uh, first black 
Governor, governor in mm-hmm. Florida. So bravo to you, Lucy Macbeth, uh, Stacey Abrams, Andrew Gilliam, and all of the uh, people yes. who have won these seats in the midterm elections. And all of the $5.5 billions of dollars that went out. I guess it was money well spent. Yeah. Um, and I also want to touch on, which is a lot of people really don't pay the questions on the ballot any mind. Um, but those things are so important. I know like before every election, you know, you get, I don't, you get the white thing with the sheet. It mm-hmm. shows you exactly what it's going to look like when you go in the booth. It tells you who's running. It might give you some information on the people, but you should really do your own research as well. And it always tells you what questions are on the ballot. When I, you know, I glance over who's running because I usually know that kind of stuff. But when I get that paper in the mail, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm eating my dinner that night or the next day, well before the election, I am always reading and, you know, looking for information so that I can answer those questions because those questions are very important. And so many people don't pay them any mind, mm-hmm. you know, less than less than like they say something like it's way less than half for the people who vote actually answer the questions. Right. They don't even vote on the questions. They'll vote on candidates, but they don't vote on the questions. Right. And um, in my election, in you know my little town, um, in in my little town, I um, the question was the only exciting thing that uh was on was, the ballot. <laughs> was on the ballot. It was like the only exciting thing. Mm-hmm. So um and. I voted no on the question and I don't, I'm not ashamed to say I voted no, but it gave, and a lot of people came out and voted on the question. And so it what cause what happened was, you know, they took over our school district in mm-hmm. our city and right. the mayor was appointing the board members to the school board. Right. So they took that power back and now it's going to be an open public election where parents and, you know, people who as live in the community, be. as it should be. Exactly. However, that's only the first step because the state still has power mm-hmm. over the school. They still have appointed people in there to run the school district. So, um, hope is, but it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, we just want to, um, so I was really happy about that, but people don't pay attention to that question, and so the people in California <laughs> played themselves. No, they really Goofy did play themselves. Asses. Like, what is wrong with you? So in California, you they... In right, in <laughs> California, you know that the cost of living, California has one of the highest cost of living in the United States. Mm-hmm. They have some of the highest taxes in the United States, and they have some of the worst traffic, but that neither being here nor there. Mm-hmm. In California, the question, they voted no to have rent control, Mm, mm, state mm. rent control uh, in California. And it it goes to show you that people don't pay attention, like you said, and they're not reading them. And I I had quite a few people that I follow on Twitter that live in California say that the question was worded so strangely that they get it early. You right. get it early. But I don't even think people pay attention. They to, don't. I don't think people pay attention to that because in reality, when I get that question is when I go and I'm when I'm walking into the poll booth and they say, do you want a sample ballot? And then I get it. And then I look. That's when I read the question. Oh. So I can imagine what other people do. Mm-hmm. I always read. I always read the question because I don't know. Maybe I learned it in ninth grade civics class or something. But they talk about how the very important stuff they put in fine print, like it's an afterthought, like it's yeah. not important, and that's how things happen, you yeah. know. And you just caught out there. So when I first read my question, I was the way that they worded it was confusing. So I mm-hmm. called my educator friends up. I was like, "What's this they talking about on the ballot?" They was like, "Girl, blah 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 blah." I said, "Oh, I'm voting no to that." They was like, "Thank you." Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, and mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, but you have to find out. And now, look at you now, California. Yeah. Y'all gonna be living in pods and storage containers forevermore. Yeah. They you y'all really about are. to go up on your rent in the storage container because they doing all kinds of stuff to find places to live. Exactly. Acting like acting like it's um you know ingenuity. Okay, right. <laughs> you, live, you live in a pod. <laughs> exactly. They are the true definition of the little house. Um, but speaking of the question. I don't usually say Bravo, Florida. 
I, I, it's yeah. not a lot of times that I say Bravo, Florida, but Bravo, Florida, because Florida's uh, voted to have people with felonies and criminal records of voting rights restored. Right. So now people in Florida that have criminal records, who have felony on their records, they can now vote. And that is huge because we know that we have the highest populations of people that are incarcerated, right. men and women that are incarcerated. And so the fact that they now get to vote is huge. And it's I mean, it they, is huge. They have paid their debt to society. That's right. And, and, you know, restore their civic right. You know right. what I mean? Like, and that's, I, I, that's yeah. Bravo and you have, and you have so many people. The question. Right. You have so many people who, who don't want to vote, who feel like their votes don't matter, who have, the, who have every right to vote. And then mm -hmm. you have a population of people in certain states who don't have that right, whose right is taken from them. And even just thinking about stuff like that, not only thinking about your ancestors who were uh, killed or, or, or who faced backlash because they wanted the chance to vote, but people mm -hmm. like that people in Florida or people in other states who don't get a chance to vote because their rights were taken away from them. And let's not forget, if I don't say anything else of importance about voting on this podcast, let me say mm -hmm. this. Candidates who run in these elections, they count on you not voting. Yes, they, they do. They count on mm -hmm. you thinking that your vote don't matter. And mm -hmm. that's the reason why you have candidates who have been in those seats for years and years and years mm -hmm. and years and years and they ain't going nowhere mm -hmm. because you have people who don't vote and mm -hmm. you have people who think that their votes don't matter and they bank and they prey on those people. And that's why they have rallies and such and they tell mm -hmm. you, oh, this is not important and that's not important. Pay attention to what people are feeding you, the propaganda that people are feeding you. Pay attention to that because yeah. they bank on that. And so we have to know that it is our right. It is our God given right. Something that people fought for us to do. The voting right came into effect for African Americans in 1965. Not it's 2018. That wasn't that long ago that you didn't even have the chance. The chance exactly. To, I mean, to exactly. vote. And so now that you do exercise that vote, I don't care if you don't know who the people are, if you don't know what they stand about. I'm not saying you have to de vote Democrat because I think that black people have this. Oh, we got to vote Democrat. No, it's you. You can vote for mm. whatever you want to vote for as long as but you vote. vote. Exactly. And you know what? To piggyback on that, um, since you didn't put my business out there last week about you know, I listen to country stations, um, but I do. No, I do. Um, but <laughs> the campaigning that I heard on those radio stations were outrageous. And, and I was way? like, like, they were like, come on, get there. We don't want those Democrats in office trying to keep everything Obama did, and mm. we need to support Trump. They're trying to mm. take away his power. They're I mean, they were just out and out saying just just like that. They like, like they like the people I always talk about. Just come out and say what you what it is. Don't don't beat around the bush. <laughs> no politically, no politically correct speech, no nothing. Like out there. Exactly. And I was just, I kept, I was, I was like, dang, you know, when I went to work, I was like, I was telling one of my doctors, like, you should have heard it. And so we turned the radio station on in his office just so we can, you know, wait to hear a commercial. Mm -hmm. And I went somewhere, or whatever. He was like, oh, you just missed one. You know? <laughs> Like, and he was like, that's crazy, right? I mean, you should really hear it's hate speech. Right. It, it is. really is hate speech. Um, and that's what they spend their money on. Mm -hmm. And that and the message that they want to get out is loud and clear. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Get these people out of here. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So, you know, it's just important to know. Mm hmm. Well, that was a long who did some shit. It was. But America, it was, but, it was in, but it was important to note. I mean, we couldn't yeah. talk about voting all of this time on all of these shows and then not uh, give you the who, who did some shit because mm -hmm. our women went out there, our women of color, and um, they went out there and they really did that shit. Right. And I'm saying even though the election is over, mm -hmm. you know, I wish for women to keep the gusto. That's right. You know, 
this Alexandria Ocasio from New York is young. She's a millennial. Yep. And she's in Congress. And and so there are going to be more opportunities for us to serve and get our voices out. So, yep. you know, it's important to, you know, get involved with your community. Do things now so that when the elections come back, you feel more empowered to evoke more change. Yeah. And remember so, that that stuff affects you. It does. It affects you every day and you can make a difference for your children and your grandchildren mm-hmm. if you choose to have some. So, I mean, I know that time is spent, but I just don't want to um, sign off before we talk about yet another mass shooting. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, it really is sad. It's, um, it is it is ridiculous. Let's, it is let's have a, just a, a, a quick moment of silence, silence for uh, the people who lost their life yes. in all of these mass, mass shootings. shootings. Okay. <laughs> no. Like, okay. But, no. Yes. Rest in peace so, to those people. Yes. It's First of all, like... You know, a lot of people think that um, gun reform is going to occur because of these mass shootings. And I just want to say that I do not believe that it's going to affect anything with gun reform. I think one of the biggest problems we have is how we um, treat, how we diagnose, prevent mental illness. Mm hmm. And, um, you know, anxiety, depression, you know, things that we think are regular life stressors are now they're mental illnesses. You know, people cannot cope. Inability to cope is a mental illness. And we do not do a good job in uh, diagnosing and treating mental illness. And until we fix that, these things are going to go on. But I, while I was thinking about this yet another mass shooting, um, I'm just thinking about what if I'm somewhere Mm-hmm. And this happens because that's what I'm thinking now. Because remember, um, our cousin was um at a party where they had a mass shooting once. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when she was away in college, mm-hmm. and there was a party um at one of the big uh, houses on campus, and there was a mass shooting. And you know, we had like a family prayer, you know, on that weekend when she came home or whatever. Right. You know, just thank God for sparing her life and that she wasn't hurt. And, you know, her friends, they were fine. But um, but it was she did scary. have a, 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 a close friend, that friend of hers that got. Uh, did she die? Yes. Yeah, she, she had a close die. friend of hers that passed away in that yeah, shooting. In that shooting. And, and you know, that changes your life. Mm-hmm. That You know, that changes your life. So I just 100%. like to um, I just thought about, you know, what. You know, what if I was in a situation you know, how do you survive a mass shooting? Mm-hmm. Um, and I was reading, you know, just reading through some things. And there was a Navy SEAL um, back in like 2015. And he just wrote this little thing, like how to survive a mass shooting. And I was reading it and I'm like, um, sir, you're a Navy SEAL. Right. I'm, I'm a single mom from the ghetto. Like what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, <laughs> So, uh, because the first thing on his list was carry a concealed weapon. Okay, I live in New Jersey. We have right. like the worst gun laws, gun laws. ever. There's exactly. no defense. This no is not an open stop. carry state, exactly. sweetheart. That's just not going to work for me. Um, you know what I mean? But um, I know, like, you know, with the fire, they tell you to stop, drop, and roll. So, uh, one of the big things that I, most of the articles that I was reading said was get low and go. Like, get low as fast as you can. Mm-hmm. And and try, you know, always be trying to steadily move away. You'd be surprised at how many people panic and freeze. And then they, they, they are, you know, targets because, you know, they're, like, right there. Mm-hmm. Um. I think that there's a difference if the shooter is specifically aiming at somebody, because if that target is moving, you know, they're moving, but sometimes they're not, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? They're just seeing like how many casualties um, they can have. Um, they say, and this is one thing I think we just learn. Cause you know, when you grow up in the hood, this is always be aware of your surroundings. That's right. You know, you just, you, You wouldn't believe how many people come out of like anything. It doesn't even have to be a mass shooting, but like uh, somebody gets robbed or purse snatching or anything and nobody can describe the scene. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's crazy. It is. (laughs) 
you know what I mean? You don't know where the exits are. You don't know what aisle it was. You know, people just don't pay attention. They're so oblivious Mm -hmm. to, you know, what is going on. So it's always good to know, uh, I'd be able to identify your scene and be aware. Mm -hmm. Um, If you can, they say barricade yourself um, from the shooter. Okay. I mean, if you can barricade yourself from the shooter, if there are things that you can put in between um, yourself and the shooter to protect, like a you know a lot of people, or whatever, then you can barricade yourself. That's, That's why they teach that in um, schools because you know now in schools instead of fire drills, they have mass shooting drills. Yes. And yes. they the talk shooter. about barricading because um, I have a friend who's a teacher and he he I went in his classroom and I'm like why is the windows covered with paper? And he was like, Oh, "Oh, we had a mass shooting drill. And I'm like, we have them at the hospital too. Right. So he talked about how they taught them to barricade themselves in, um, during that time, if that ever happened. Right. And then another thing uh, they say, which I think is, um, a a pretty decent idea, but you know, people are so busy trying to run, but if there are objects close to you, they say, throw stuff at the shooter. You know, because I mean, yeah, because like, look at David and Goliath, one smooth stone hit him right between the eyes. So if you got people throwing stuff at you while they're trying to get away, you know, that can really throw them off. They could fall, you know, anything can happen. So, um, oh. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to sit and, you know, stop that's, what, that's what I'm thinking. Like, that's I, not what I'm thinking I don't about. want, okay. But if, if you are, if you are, it, it depends on where you are and, and what where you are and what's around you. Because some people, like if they're in classrooms, they don't have much. Or you know in their I mean? movie theaters where mass shootings ha- ha- have happened. Or right. if they're outside in a concert space, well, outdoor concert space, like what happened in Las Vegas. Oh, yeah, Las Vegas. You know, yeah. It's nothing to barricade yourself with. It's nothing to right. um, throw any right. objects that was, or anything that, like that. That is definitely that is definitely a get low and go as, as soon as possible kind of thing. Because since you mentioned Las Vegas, you know, that happened last year, October 1st. And... um. Even if you get low, because the shooter was high, yeah. shooting down on people. But right. and they said that was um, the most people killed in a mass shooting. Yeah, uh, fifty-eight people 58 lost their people. life. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, fifty-eight people. And before that, it was um, the Pulse nightclub. It was forty-nine. The Pulse mm-hmm. nightclub in um, Orlando, Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, it's just a really sad, sad state. And um, you know, prayers going out to. Um, not the people who lost their lives and their families, you know, and the people who experienced that, whose lives will be forever changed. But, you know, we don't have all the answers here on who did some shit, but something's got to give. Yeah, I agree. I I think that, you know, dealing with the mass shootings, it it really is, it's, We had an episode where we talked about being desensitized, you know, Mm -hmm. and we talked about being desensitized Mm -hmm. to things that was happening in our hood, you know, or just how you grow up in the, in the, the environment. It, it just makes you desensitized. But when I see things like this and these mass shootings, they're becoming so normalized that I feel like I'm desensitized from them. I feel like I, I put a tweet out and it said another mass shooting another white domestic terrorist Mm -hmm. and another time where nothing will be done with it right you know right i don't think that these mass shoot uh, you know it's almost like it's almost like the mass shootings are timed it's almost like somebody is sitting somewhere and they're like hey it's time have another one because they are happening far too often. Mm. And I don't know if it's that we weren't paying attention before to stuff that was happening because mm. I know that it's like many, you know, mass shootings that can t- have happened in the past right and now. And I don't know if it's just that we wasn't paying attention or what, but mm. now that it's, I guess in the age of social media where everything is just like in right. your face, right. and you pay attention to everything that's happening. That is more like, Hey, it's here. It's, it's been happening, but the fact that it's normalized now and the fact that nothing is going to happen, the fact that you can have 12 people that 
uh, got murdered in a what? What had? Where were they at? In a nightclub in California? In the, a nightclub, the latest yeah. uh, mass mm-hmm. shooting. Most of those people were young people, college students. Uh, you know, the people who just got murdered in Pittsburgh in a synagogue. You right. know, going to church. The children who were murdered in uh, Sandy mm-hmm. Hook. You know, and, and you would middle think, school, like, right? You would think like if they ain't gonna do nothing with no kids, babies, right? Exactly. You know, what, what what is going to happen? And you said something earlier, and I just wanted to talk about this a little bit. You talked about how we uh, we don't pay attention to men- mental health or mental illness, and that we we don't do a good job at that. I agree with you, but I don't think that these people who are committing these mass uh, shootings, the majority, the large majority of them, have any kind of mental issues. Oh yes, they do. They know exactly what they're doing. Well, they, I'm not saying that they don't know, but they certainly have. It, it is not normal. And it's I'm not, not saying, normal for you to want to go and and be an active shooter where you can kill more than one person for no good reason. That is a mental health issue. That clearly is a mental health issue. Well, I think that when we, you know, I'm not saying that they don't know what they're doing, but it's definitely a mental health issue. OK, well, I I just feel like if we, you know, put when 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 white terrorists white domestic terrorists is out here killing people mm-hmm. at the uh at the rate that they're killing people in these mass shootings because most of the people who are committing the mass shootings are white are white um i just feel and like it's like yeah and then i feel like it's like a mental health thing but had the, the any of these mass shooters been a black man or a black woman or a, a Latino woman or a Latino man, you know, an Asian man or an Asian woman, but more specifically a black woman or a black man, because that's what I could speak to. I don't think that mental health would come into play at all. No, no they wouldn't. They wouldn't. But right. They and wouldn't. so I just, that's just where I'm at with the mental health thing is I, I'm not, you know, they might have mental health issues, you know, because uh, the lady but, who shot up YouTube, that okay. mental health. Right. She was a woman, and and she was a woman of color too. I think was it wasn't was she? she? Yeah, she was Middle Eastern or something. And she, uh, yeah, she that's mental health. But you know they was messing with her checks, so I don't know. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, so I don't know. But I just didn't want to just let that pass. You know, we're living in a crazy time, and you know, people, we just have to be aware that the next one. It could be us. Yeah. You know, it could be us. So just, you know, be aware. And um, that's all I got about that. Yeah, I agree. Be aware of your surroundings. I say mm-hmm. where I live at all the time, people just walk outside like they in La La Land. And, and they have, are. Yeah. Well, I, you know, like you said, you know, let's just end it with be aware. You know, right. pay attention to your surroundings. Thank you for all of the people who went out there. And I, I'm saying thank you. Thank you for people who went out there and cast their votes and made their voices be heard. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to what this next chapter is going to bring in this administration. Yes. Um, yes. Sisters, I am counting on you. I'm be writing letters and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and get involved, like uh, Baby mm-hmm. said, and like she continues to say, you know, get involved in your local politics, get involved in what's going on in your neighborhoods um, and let your voices be heard. Young people continue to uh, get out there and exercise your right to vote. And as far as these mass shootings are concerned, once again, we want to say condolences um, from We Did That Shit podcast out to the families who are experiencing this and for the people who have lost their lives in these mass shootings. Yeah. But we're going to go ahead and get on out of here for this week. Uh, remember that you can follow us on all social media platforms, like the B said in the beginning, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at We Did That Shit. You got anything that you want to say to us? You know, we are we don't have the answers to anything, everything. But if you have something you want us to uh, talk about or just a question, comment or concern about the podcast, you can always send anything that you have. to we did that shit at Gmail dot com. Remember, you can follow me on my personal Twitter. It's my my 13. That's M Y M Y one three. And I'm at the B Amina. That's B I B B I A M I N A. Remember that an all new episode drops each and every Monday and you can find us anywhere where you can listen to your free. We always say it. It's free podcast platform site. And we'll be here at the same time next week. Happy Veterans Day.
and thank you for your service. Be great this week. I love you, Maya. Love you too. <laughs> <laughs> you was waiting for the laugh. <laughs> <laughs>